Arun Sangam, Managing Partner with GSP Capital Management, joins us live from New York. Arvind, uh, I know these are VRs for you, so really appreciate uh, you taking time out. Arvind, uh, if I look at all global emerging markets and developed markets, they are firmly fixed in the red. Now, last night's Fed communication was on expected lines, so if the communication was on expected lines, what is the panic all about? Well, I think uh, even before the uh, Fed decision came out, the markets were off. Uh, you had uh, Turkey raise rates dramatically, and the Turkish lira rallied for a few hours and then gave up uh, the rally and had already weakened. You know, uh, in the morning New York time, the Fed decision came out at 2 p.m. in the afternoon New York time. So I think emerging markets uh, are continuing to uh, get nervous of the fact that the Fed is set on its course and doesn't seem to be paying too much attention uh, to the pain happening in emerging markets. And the reality is, uh, you know, there are enough emerging markets, whether it's uh, Turkey or it's uh, you know, Ukraine or it's Thailand or others where there is a combination of political and economic turmoil that is creating risk. And, you know, you had the Argentina uh, situation last week with them devaluing the currency. The currencies in uh, South Africa, Brazil, a lot of other emerging markets have been particularly weak. So it's looking like, you know, although the first news of the Fed taper when it came out in December uh, emerging markets seem to be handling it relatively smoothly. Uh, in the last few weeks, uh, the emerging market cracks have started to widen. Uh, and I think uh, today's uh, Fed decision, uh, while not surprising in any way, just uh, finally, frankly, gave uh, no reason to go by emerging markets. Uh, and and that, that fear is continuing. And, and I think uh, uh, that's, uh, that, uh, that's what is creating the risk of trade right now. Arvind, does it seem like India too is going to be painted with the same picture, although our dynamics are completely different from the rest of the emerging world? Well, let's be clear that a major cause of the Indian current account deficit reduction has been reduction in gold imports. Now, that again, because of fortuitous timing or because it was kind of pro-cyclical, happened uh, at the same time that gold globally was uh, was weakening and when the government uh, you know made gold imports more difficult <clears throat> the consumers uh, at the same time were falling out of love with gold because gold prices had crashed pretty badly now if you start to get a rally in gold prices because in a risk of mode gold becomes a safe haven again then one of the risks is if there is you know finger in the dike of india's current account deficit it is uh, this, you know, stopping of gold imports. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think we all recognize, and I think uh, RBI recognizes this, that this is not a structural solution. This is a short-term solution, and people will find ways through gold smuggling or what have you to meet that demand if, uh, if, if the rupee starts to weaken again. So there is the risk that, you know, India is not completely out of the woods. I think India has done a good job, <clears throat> and some of the things are structural, and some of the uh, additional uh, dollar availability for the central bank is, is good. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, gold remains the Achilles heel. Uh, that could still come back to be a negative uh, for the Indian current account deficit. Uh, and unfortunately, the elections are still, uh, you know, election results are still four months away. So we don't have, uh, 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 you know, a government clarity on, on that government. So there is some risk, uh, obviously, as the market has shown, uh, India is not at the top of the risk uh, scale, uh, but, but it's, uh, I wouldn't completely rule it out. So what's the view on the currency then, Arvind? We managed to stay stable around 62-odd levels up until now. Do you think we could see that ugly 69 take emerge anytime soon, or are we going to hover around 62, 64 kind of levels? Well, uh, I certainly uh, am hoping that we don't see 68 or 69. Uh, but could 62, you know, it touched 63 and a half. Uh, could it, uh, could it go to 64, 65? I mean, uh, we're in this range where, uh, uh, where, you know, uh, I think, uh, it is conceivable depending on what happens in global emerging markets. Uh, India is not immune to it. And I think, uh, uh, the RBI decision to raise rates while, uh, uh, ostensibly were completely related to domestic inflation. Uh, I, 
I very much suspect uh, that uh, the global currency turmoil uh, did play a role in the RBI's decision to, uh, you know, to bump up interest rates uh, by 25 bips uh, the last couple of days. And so I, I do think that uh, the, the currency risks remain. Uh, it's, you know, it's not a central case by any stretch that the currency is going to weaken more than uh, three, or, three or four percent, but three or four percent is possible. So depending on what happens to other EM currencies and how things play out, that risk remains. But, you know, but I'm not panicking here, thinking that the rupee is, uh, you know, about to go crashing. But I'm keeping a close eye on gold because, to me, that is a risk factor for, uh, for uh, uh, the Indian story and the Indian currency and the Indian current economy. So, so Arvind, what happens next? If risk of trade makes a comeback, will gold go up? Will developed markets outperform? Will money move out of emerging markets? And will foreigners turn net sellers in India? Well, I mean, uh, that's the $64,000 question, and I'm not sure I know the answer to all those questions. I feel that you know, the market has done a reasonably good job so far distinguishing between emerging markets where there is policy paralysis and structural problems uh, you know, and uh, countries like India, which seem to have uh, some hope of, uh, you know, policy turning more favorable, as well as a central bank that is uh, quite vigilant. So I think that uh, so far India has uh, benefited from uh, uh, having a little bit more clarity, of both on the current government and the visibility of the future government being uh, steady hands in a central bank governor that the market has a lot of confidence in. Uh, so I would say that, you know, the emerging markets sell off uh, is probably not going to result in a major mishap for India or, or frankly, for all emerging markets. But I think the risk